Today, Parliament approved the state of emergency that was announced by the President. As of now, Sri Lanka is under a state of emergency for at least a period of one month. Of course, this can be uh, revoked by the representative that you have elected into Parliament. But for the time being, your representatives in Parliament believe that Sri Lanka should be under a state of emergency given the incidents that are unfolding in the country. Good evening. Welcome. This is Prime Time News on TV1. We've got the details of these stories and much more lined up for you tonight. But first, a look at your top stories. Proclamation of State of Emergency passed in Parliament. Government gives conflicting views on those behind the Aragalia protests. Aragalia activist Danis Ali arrested by CID. Another activist taken away in a van. GC Bindu Aitunsiya Hatalis Teka Kiyana Nilpahat Nilpahati Ji Pratel Dagan Dana Tatun Veranga Pushviki Inna Koi Dikla Api Dan Nene US trying to destabilize the government alleges Vimal. US Ambassador Julie Chang calls on President Vikramasinghe. Opposition leader assures will not violate mandate vows to retire if such a situation arises. Basil starts to reform the party. Main sponsor. Earn a highest interest rate of 21% for four months fixed deposits. LB Yasaisuru. Several important political decisions are being made throughout the course of these days and today the proclamation on a state of emergency uh, that was issued by the president a few weeks ago was passed in parliament and this is how your elected representatives in parliament voted on this state of emergency the proclamation on the state of emergency declared under the public security ordinance was approved after a debate in parliament earlier today it was passed with a majority of 57 votes as 120 votes were cast in favor and 63 votes were cast against independent mps vimal veeravansa mohammed buzamil nimal pietissa gamini valeboda uddika premaratna gevindu kumar tunga asanka navaratna jayaratna herat and wdj Senratna voted in favour of the state of emergency. Tamara Sampad Dasanayaka from the Sri Lanka Freedom Party also voted in favour. In addition, Jeevan Thondaman and Mardapandi Rameshwara from the Ceylon Workers Congress also cast their vote in favour. The Samagi Janabalavegya, JVP and the TNA voted against the state of emergency, while Chairman of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, Professor G. L. Piris, SLPP Treasurer Dallas Salha Peruma, Parliamentarians Dilan Pereira, Dr. Nalaka Godeheva, Udayana Kirindigoda and Vasa Santayapa Bandara were also against the state of emergency. Sri Lanka's law has sufficient provisions to maintain peace and order. Law and order was not maintained in the recent past, not because of a lacuna in the law, but because it was not enforced properly. At this moment, there is no need to impose emergency regulations, which allows for any written law of the land to be overridden. I am someone who believes in democracy and someone who has faced the consequences of terror. However, that should not be a premise to impose emergency laws which could bring about the unexpected circumstances. Those in power at present abuse the law during the time of the good governance government. I believe it's not a healthy omen for such people to be given a weapon such as this. Representatives elected to parliament through your vote spoke about the current situation in the country, especially surrounding the proclamation of a state of emergency issued by the president. Here are some of those views that were expressed in Parliament today. 
When the Aragalia People's Protest began, what we saw was the genuine voice of the youth of the country. We need to listen to that genuine voice. Now we have serious doubts if these are linked to the LTTE, Easter attacks and foreign forces. Why was there a need to impose a state of emergency? The reasons were the abuse of social media to propagate disinformation and prevent expression of opinions in a manner that instills violence. Secondly, there is a need to ensure that essential services continue uninterrupted. Also, crimes were committed against people and their properties, unlawful assemblies, and implementing regulations to ensure that they are dispersed. The Triforces were vested with certain powers to ensure that public security is protected. The detention period to conduct investigations needs to be extended. That is the reason why a state of emergency needs to be imposed, Honorable Speaker. When the situation returns to normalcy within a short period of time, these regulations will be removed. These regulations are extremely serious, Honorable Speaker. Speaker. Police officers can arrest anyone without a warrant. They can seize property. We always spoke against these harsh laws in Parliament. The European Union and the United Nations always informed us to remove these harsh regulations. What can we do if we do not get funds from the IMF? I don't think that we will be able to get these funds at least until mid next year. This is the same old wine in new bottles. This government is not accepted internationally. Underworld gangsters led this struggle while using peaceful protesters as a disguise. These drug addicts are the ones that are leading these protests and rallies and they are being used to break barricades. The current president's media division is now handled by two individuals who are mainly involved in this people's struggle. I recently saw a post made by them on Facebook welcoming the people of the struggle to join hands to rebuild the nation. I would like to thank them for that. Under these circumstances, we need to remove these people who are acting irresponsibly and control these unlawful acts. As the subject minister, I urge the House to pay more attention to this issue. Therefore, I believe that we need to remove these people from this site and provide them with an alternative site to carry out their demonstrations. The urgency to conclude this debate is the same they have to encourage oppression and unleash state-sponsored terrorism. The dream to become president was realized. I think as two senior politicians in this house, your dreams came true today. We are happy about it. But do not forget, you have crushed the dreams and aspirations of 22 million people in this country. What has happened has happened. A president has been elected. Even we came with pure intentions to work together. But Prime Minister, we are still concerned about what happened that night. Who is behind this? Who advised the president and his team to do this? That was a short-sighted move. They unleashed state-sponsored terrorism that night and brutally attacked the people at the struggle. You think we would also join your government when you commit such foolish acts? As the Samagi Balavege, we are not ready to betray the people's mandate and go against it. If we cannot make that decision together, all that is left for me is to retire from politics. We have our principles. I don't think Ranil Vikramasinghe, as an experienced politician, would make such a short-sighted decision. I don't think these leaders have still understood the ground reality of this issue, not even after removing a president who had a mandate of 6.9 million people. The current president was a man who was rejected by the people. With this, we can see the new president is now manipulating the security forces to try and suppress the people. You need to understand that 22 million people are here together in this people's struggle. Even 95% of the officers in security forces are also with the people in the struggle. I would urge the security forces not to attack these youth who are involved in this people's struggle. We are expecting to rally the whole country back to Colombo on the 9th of next month. On this day, we urge our youth to chase away these corrupt politicians and save this nation. They say that they are coming on the 9th of August to send someone else home. After that, Dinesh will have to be the president. This is utterly pointless. Gota go home, then Ranil go home, then Dinesh go home. It's easier to say who you want. We will make him president. He won't have to do any other work to overcome this crisis. Doesn't this country want to breathe in peace? When you say go home, won't you let this country fight to get out of this economic crisis?
They put the youth in the front lines, but who is actually pulling the strings? Terrorist leaders. If I was to live for another 20 years before I got beaten up, now it is down to 10 years. On the other hand, I say to the opposition leader that the terrorist leaders who come to the discussion with you are not on your side. They are lying. They have no friends. Then what is the point of engaging in these discussions and being fooled? They say that they are ready to give you power, but they do not want to do so. They want to gain power for themselves. If they are trying to solve this issue through weapons, the experience both the North and South have is the same. Do not let this turn into another bloodbath. I would like to state this. If the President is forming an all-party government, then he has to be transparent with the decisions he makes and has to prove his loyalty without taking in people from random parties. We cannot solve this issue in such a manner. When the youth went to Golface, behind them were groups that led armed struggles in Sri Lanka who have Australian citizenship and lead the armed struggles in Sri Lanka. The struggle of these young people was taken by force and they want to establish power outside the parliament. The leader of the group held a press conference the other day and said no matter who takes government, that government will have to lead the country the way that they want. If you want the protesters to leave and for the Aragale to end, all you need to do is reform. The members of the Aragale have been waiting for several people to be arrested. But instead, you are imposing emergency laws and arresting the protesters. Why can't we arrest those responsible for bringing our people to the streets, depleting our dollar reserves and destroying the country's economy? Why can't they arrest those who devalued the rupee against the dollar by 380 rupees? Arrest those behind the bond scam and the April 21st attacks. Arrest those who are behind the sugar scam. I don't believe that the Prime Minister's residence was set ablaze by peaceful protesters. If an organized gang was behind it, arrest them. If we think that because we have 134 votes in Parliament by which we can appoint a president and move forward, we are mistaken. Try to form an all-party government. But if it's going to be dominated by the Sri Lanka Podhujana Peramuna members trying to show off their strength, whether it be the 9th of August, September or October, we will eventually see another uprising like the 9th of July. Do you expect the people of this country to sit back and accept these conditions and to accept this as normal? It is not normal. They are not able to get on with their lives. Children have been deprived of school for over two and a half years. It is under these conditions that people got onto the streets. And arrests have been made of people who have been critical of the state, of state institutions on social media. How is that proportionate action? Uh, people have been pulled off planes. These, these sites are now being broadcast throughout the world in a way that is highly damaging to our international image, highly damaging to uh, the commitments that this government has made uh, to, towards democracy. There were attempts to propagate emergency which failed. Now after the new president has taken over, a state of emergency is being declared. What for? He became president on account of this protest. If not for this protest, he won't be president today. That's quite simple. Everyone who says we must abide by the constitution is now have seated there having formed a new government on the back of the protest. You have benefited from the protest and once you have sat there, you are saying all this is illegal. Then all that happened is also illegal. Then you occupying that post is also illegal. Impunity in this country. Several Gota Gogam activists have now been taken into custody by Sri Lankan authorities. Attorney at law Nuan Bopage revealed that five leading Gota Gogama activists were arrested by Sri Lankan authorities on Wednesday. Aragale activist Dani Zali was arrested by the Criminal Investigations Department on Tuesday evening while seated inside a plane that was ready to take off from the Katunayaka airport. Detectives from the CID had boarded the plane after Dani Zali had passed the immigration and emigration process and had taken his seat on the flight scheduled to leave for Dubai at 6.35 p.m. Fellow passengers had expressed their dismay over the method of arrest and questioned its legality.
හරි ඒකට වරන්ට් එකක් In the midst of the protest by passengers, an officer made a phone call and requested for documentation to be sent to him. <laughs> මම කතා කරේ මේ රට වෙනුවෙන් මම වැස්සේ බාහිර මගේ රට මටත් අවුරුදු දෙක ආමාරක දරුවෙක් ඉන්නවා හරිද මම වැස්සේ බාහිර මගේ මේ රට රට ගන්න ඔය බෝටා බේක ගෙදරන් අපි බාහිර ගන්න ඒක තමයි ඒ අරයි යන්න විදිහ හදපු විදිහ සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම වැරදි මාට වරන්ට් එකයි ඩවල් බෑන්ඩ් එකයි ගැනලා පෙන්නලා යත් එක්ක කතා කරලා එහෙම කරන්න තිබුණා මම සමේ රට වෙනුවෙන් කතා කරලා එහෙම නැහැ රස් කරන්න හරි ජෝ අම්මා හරි ජෝ බ්‍රාවෝ ජ වෙන්න ඕන හරි ජෝ ජ වෙන්න ඕන Thereafter several uniformed police officers boarded the flight and displayed a document to the passengers. <laughs> Thereafter, police officers and CID detectives manhandled Dani Sali and took him off the flight. The flight departed the airport following a 30-minute delay, and Dani Sali was moved to the airport police. प्रहार <laughs> Police spokesperson SSP Nihal Taldua told News First that Dani Zali faces multiple charges including obstructing the gates to the Ministry of Finance and staging a protest preventing officials from engaging in discussions with the IMF delegation. The Fort Police submitted facts to the Fort Magistrates Court and the court issued a warrant for the arrest of the suspect as he failed to appear in court on the respective date. He was released on bail on the 12th of June for being part of a protest opposite the police headquarters on the 9th of june the fort police had also submitted facts to court with regard to an assault on military intelligence personnel on the 13th of july he had forced his way into the sri lanka rupavahini corporation and forced to suspend the transmission and change the programming lineup he had made threatening statements during the broadcast thus he was a wanted suspect tarjanatmaka prakash idiripat kar thibuna mema sidwin keepe sambandhayenma awashya kara city saka tharwe Dani Zali who was arrested while trying to travel to Dubai on Tuesday was remanded until the 5th of August by the Fort Magistrates Court. Moving on in more local news the Inter University Students Federation alleges that an unidentified group traveling in a vehicle had taken away an activist involved in the Aragalaya named Viranga Pushpika from Petar this afternoon. Viranga Pushpika is a former president of the Inter University Students Federation. How many thieves left the country with state support? We saw what unfolded with Basil Raj Paksa. They came together to help people who were involved in illegal MIG deals, those with multiple court cases and some who squandered the funds of the state to escape the country. The main culprit Gota Biraj Paksa was sent away on a military aircraft. While that happened in such a manner, Dani Ali who was involved in the struggle was arrested. White Van circle the Kalania hostel every morning. Why is this happening? 
Veranga Pushpika of the University of Rohna, a former president of the IUSF who participated in the protest opposite Colombo Fort, had been taken away on a blue SUV with the license plate GC0342. We are unaware of his whereabouts. He has clearly been abducted. They do not even have a proper mandate. Ranil Vikramasinghe is in power thanks to the support of thugs like Sanat Nishanta. They are toying with our mandate. A collective of trade unions and organizations filed a complaint with the Human Rights Commission over the abduction of an activist. A complaint was filed with the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka claiming that Veeranga Pushpika was abducted. If Ranil Vikramasinghe is assuming that he can use the presidency that he obtained to elicit means to do whatever he wants, we wish to tell him that this is not 1988 or 1989. This is not the government of 1976 that had a massive majority. What we have is a president who is piggybacking on another person's mandate. The people who originally had the mandate have lost it. We urge both sides to stop playing games and if they are trying to randomly arrest the youth and abduct them on false charges, we will take the next step. We will take this up with the UN, EU and embassies. Five people have been arrested within a day. The military has been deployed for civil matters and are attacking the people with zero morality. They are trying to create divisions among the forces of the people. What we see is his attempt to repeat the uncle's way that we saw in 1988 and 89. The government must end the suppression. Many protesters are facing a situation where they cannot even remain at the agitation site. Their houses are being visited to make arrest. Sri Lanka police headquarters is now the headquarters for suppressing the Aragale. Three monks who were observing Vas at Gota Gogama in close proximity to the statue of SWRD Bandar Naika were asked to remove their tents by the Colombo Fort Police. Since there are many people around here and this is bothering others, we will remove it. But the people of this country will remember that the government of Ranil Vikramasinghe destroyed a monastery that housed ordained monks who were observing Vas. The monks thereafter took steps to dismantle their tent and vacate the premises at around noon today. Independent parliamentarian Vimal Veeravansa, who is also the leader of the National Freedom Front, alleges that there is a U.S. fingerprint behind an attempt to destabilize the country. The parliamentarian was speaking during the debate on the state of emergency in parliament today. There is an attempt to destabilize the state and we cannot allow that to happen. Irrespective of being in the government or the opposition, we must not allow that. If that happens, it is a great sin. I do not seek positions from Ranil Vikramasinghe. I want the state. The National Endowment for Democracy is a CIA-affiliated agency in the US that started in 1983. The National Endowment for Democracy operates in almost 100 countries. In 2020, the NED offered 172 2,670 US dollars for the Law and Society Foundation. I have these documents and I am tabling them in Parliament. The Center for Policy Alternatives was given 285,000 US dollars in 2020 alone. In addition, 3.9 million US dollars was spent on the US aid CSI ROL project and the reports claim that it was provided via the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. I am not sure what would transpire from what I say. Two Russians told me that when they passed Golface, they recalled what happened in Ukraine, where the people came out to chase away the president who was close to Russia. They said that the country is not ruled by the president, but by the US ambassador who is above the president. The truth is that Gota Rajpaksa met Ambassador Julie thrice and she placed mental barriers. The decisions are not made and the crisis worsens. In the end, we do not receive help from anywhere. We are at a decisive moment. No matter what differences we have among ourselves, we must save the state from this act of destabilization. 
U.S. Ambassador to Sri Lanka Julie Chung called on President Ranil Vikramasinghe today. U.S. Ambassador to Sri Lanka Julie J. Chung was at the President's office to meet with President Ranil Vikramasinghe. In a tweet, the Ambassador said that President Ranil Vikramasinghe takes office at a time when Sri Lanka stands at a crossroads. She said they discussed how Sri Lanka arrived at this point of economic and political crisis and how both sides can work together to navigate toward a brighter future for all. She further tweeted, and I quote, Our countries and our people have been friends and partners for more than 70 years. Relationships that will flourish in a Sri Lanka that embraces good governance, respects human rights and listens to the aspirations of its people." Unquote. The President's media division in a statement said that the discussions were centered around strengthening ties between the country and taking forward relations and the US ambassador had assured support for the government's future endeavors. The International Monetary Fund said Sri Lanka should kick off debt restructuring talks with its bilateral lender China while the island state's government seeks a financing loan from the Washington-based fund. Krishna Srinivasan, director of the IMF's Asia and Pacific Department, told Reuters that China is a big creditor and that Sri Lanka has to engage proactively with it on a debt restructuring. Srinivasan also said that Sri Lanka has to engage with its creditors, both private and official, bilateral, on a debt workout to ensure debt sustainability is restored. Srinivasan said the fund is advising countries to spend more in alleviating the impact on the poor and vulnerable, but keeping budget neutral by reducing expenditure elsewhere or raising revenue where feasible. Chinese Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Kui Zhenghong, called on Foreign Minister Ali Sabri today. Ambassador Kui Zheng Hong facilitated Minister Ali Sabri on assuming the new office at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today. The two sides exchanged views on the current situation in Sri Lanka as well as the Sri Lanka-China friendship and other topics of mutual interest. At a press conference held today at its party headquarters, the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna revealed that the national organizer of the party, Basil Rajapaksa, is currently reorganizing the party. It got a Mahabanku Horakam Gan of Butmala, Vedika Vala Katakara. It got a then Hatanamalak saying Patech of Butman Hemanatang, a Bahutar Chandim Patech of Butumala Chande, they know it to Mama Nevatawata Jana di Patikaran. Even today, as responsible members of the parliament, we are in the position that the central bank robbery, however it happened, should be investigated and that the relevant parties should be punished, even though we appointed him the president. President Rani Vikramasinghe is the leader of this government and the cabinet. Our party is something else. The Sri Lanka Podujana Perumune is still headed by Mahindra Rajapaksa and Basil Rajapaksa is currently working to reorganize the party. Some new positions have to be filled. What we are hoping to do within the next two years is to look at how to provide the people what they expect, not to run away. I want to say to the protesters very clearly, you can post anything you want, we are not afraid of it. If these people who are in children's social clubs think of chasing away the Rajapaksas, that is just a dream. A Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna member of the Andhradapura Municipal Council was removed from the council premises due to a protest by the municipal workers. Anuradhapura Municipal Council workers went on strike today citing that the SLPP member Surangi Kumaratunga had verbally reprimanded the urban commissioner. During the strike, workers expressed their protest to the council member when she was in her official chambers.
The council member was escorted out of the premises and was instructed to apologize to the urban commissioner. Police was called in to control the situation and thereafter the council member left the premises. The SLPP council member is currently receiving in-house treatment at the Anuradhapura Teaching Hospital. Main sponsor. Earn a highest interest rate of 21% for four months fixed deposits. LB Yasaisuru. Sepura galan me satu tersurak cita kerani Islam Insight Islam Jiwa yang jale jiwi de. Earn a highest interest rate of 21% for four months fixed deposits. LB Asai Suru. The Human Rights Commission today investigated the attack on News First journalists that took place on the 9th of July. MTV Channel Private Limited gave evidence to the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka this afternoon on the attack on its journalists on the 9th of July 2022. That was based on the complaint we filed regarding the threat to the company's reputation and media freedom. The Commission has also given dates to obtain the testimony of the News First journalists who were attacked on that day. Vajir Abe Vardhana took oaths as a Nationalist MP in Parliament today. Vajrabe Vadana took oaths to the parliamentary seat left vacant after Ranil Vikramasinghe was elected as the president. Fellow MPs were also seen congratulating the newly appointed nationalist member of parliament. The Supreme Court today decided to remove the sitting president from the list of respondents mentioned in the fundamental rights application filed calling for an investigation against all those responsible for leading the country into bankruptcy. However, the Supreme Court decided to name former President Gotabe Rajapaksa as a respondent to the applications and issue notice on him to appear at the Supreme Court on the 1st of August to make submissions. The Supreme Court bench ordered to send notice to Gotabe Rajapaksa's last known address. The Supreme Court also ordered to extend the overseas travel ban on former President Mahinda Rajapaksa and former Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa to the 2nd of August. The order was made by a five-judge bench of the Supreme Court led by Chief Justice Jayanta Jayasurya. The petitions were filed by Transparency International Sri Lanka, Chandra Jayaratna, Jehan Kanagaratna and Former President Gota Rajapaksa is set to extend his stay in Singapore. The Strait Times in Singapore reported that his short-term visit pass, which was issued when he arrived here on a private visit two weeks ago, has been extended by another 14 days. This development comes as Sri Lanka's cabinet spokesperson Bandul Gunawadan told reporters on Tuesday that he was expected to return home. He added that he was not aware of when the former president was returning, but emphasized that Rajapaksa was not in hiding, neither was he in exile. On the 14th of July, Gotabe Rajapaksa was issued a 14-day visit pass when he arrived at the Changi airport on a Saudi flight from the Maldives. The Strait Times reported that the new visa Rajapaksa has been issued would expire on the 11th of August. Gotabe Rajapaksa initially stayed at a hotel in the city centre but is believed to have moved to a private residence. He has kept a low profile since he arrived and has not been seen in public. News first with the people. A series of shootings were reported in the country recently. Twelve shootings carried out by unknown gunmen travelling on motorbikes have been reported from the 30th of May this year. The latest shooting took place in Gampaha and Ambalanguda today. Crime Watch 
four people including Savan Rohit Pereira also known as Paspodda was injured in a shooting near the Gambaha court complex this afternoon Paspodda is said to be an accused in several criminal cases police media spokesperson SSP Nihal Taldu has said the injured suspects have been admitted to the Gampaha hospital <laughs> Six people, including Saman Rohita Pereira, had arrived at the Gambaha court premises in a cab for a court case. Four of them were injured in the shooting. The shooter had arrived at the scene of the crime and had fled the area soon after the incident. The police say a T-56 firearm was used in the shooting. Crime Watch. Two people were gunned down by an unknown gunman on a motorbike in Galagoda area in Ambalangoda. The Sri Lanka police said one person died on the spot and the other died upon admission to the Balapitiya hospital. Police suspect that this shooting may be linked to the shooting in Uruvatta Ambalangoda yesterday that killed one man. Taking a look at some news from overseas now, a magnitude 7 earthquake struck inland in the northern Philippine province of Abra today, killing at least one person and badly damaging buildings and roads and sending strong tremors through Metro Manila. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology reported the strong quake centered two kilometers northeast of Langilang in Abra. Its magnitude was initially placed at 7.3 and a 25-year-old man was killed by falling debris. Video showed parts of the Bente Bell Tower crumble the moment the magnitude 7 earthquake hit parts of Luzon. The quake damaged heritage buildings in the city of Vigan, known for its old Spanish colonial architecture on the west coast of Luzon. The Philippines is prone to natural disasters and is located on the seismic active Pacific Ring of Fire, a band of volcanoes and fault lines that arcs around the edge of the Pacific Ocean. As a result, earthquakes are frequent and there's an average of 20 typhoons each year, some triggering deadly landslides. Sri Lanka gained a virtually unassailable position in the second test against Pakistan today as Dhananjay de Silva hit a ninth test century while Dimut Karunaratna and Ramesh Mendes joined him in substantial partnerships. Pakistan playing in their second innings ended day four on 89 for one as play ended early due to bad light for the second day in a row. Earlier in the day, Sri Lanka's vice-captain Dhananjay De Silva recorded his ninth test century with a knock of 109 runs, while skipper Dimut Kaunaratna was dismissed for 61. Chasing 508 runs for victory after Sri Lanka declared their second innings on 360 for the loss of 8. The visitors now need 419 runs on the final day with 9 wickets in hand. Station, yes. And that's a wrap of Prime Time News on TV One for tonight. To follow details of these stories and more, you can log on to our award-winning website www.newsfirst.lk. Do remember that now we're under a state of emergency, so do take care, stay safe, God bless. I'm Charlotte Benedict of the News First.